Okay, so it's been a couple weeks since the first half of this video, and I never got around to the second half. Uh, I think a couple of things I mentioned, I'm a firefighter, I had gotten a call, and I never got back to it that night. And then after the next day when I started working on it, I decided to combine two sets of upgrades, and I should never do that. And uh, I ran into some issues with the second set of upgrades. Um, I did, uh, I installed silent steppers for my X and Y axis at the same time, and I ran into issues with those. I spent a lot of time debugging those to get them working. Um, but this video is on the um, uh, V-slot upgrade for the X and Y axis, um, which also includes the lead screws for the Z axis and uh, everything in there. So I already talked about the Y axis when I did the first half of this video. This is just about the X axis. Um, with the silent steppers on here, it's very quiet. I have the glass closed, I'll open it up, and I'm using a directional mic. It should pick up every sound that this makes. And what you're probably noticing is it's fairly quiet. Um, especially with the silent steppers. That was a good upgrade once I figured it out. Um, and I'm going to be moving my electronics outside of this box. And this box echoes the sound a lot. But I'll be moving those outside the box. And when I do, I will um, uh, I'll do a video on the setup on those that I'm running. Um, so, yeah, so let me uh, square up the camera and bring you on the inside for a uh, close-up view on this. Now the camera's about a foot away from the uh, from the park, um, so you're really getting a sense of, of the sound from one foot away, and it echoes in this box. Um, yeah, the stepper motors resonate in here a bit. But I'm running this print at uh, 3,300 uh, millimeters per minute, and the non-print moves are at 6,000 uh, millimeters per minute. Um, it's a new extruder I designed. It's a redesign of uh, what's called the Itty Bitty belted extruder. Uh, I designed, I redesigned it to run a uh, NEMA 17 versus a NEMA 14, which he designed it for. Um, and the guy was nice enough to have the SolidWorks files. I have SolidWorks, but I don't know how to use it that well. So I just took all of his uh, measurements and put them into Fusion 360. So this is my second print because I had forgotten to put uh, the opening in the bottom, I have to extrude the opening in the bottom for the uh, uh, E3DV6 uh, base to go into on the first one. I had drawn it, but I hadn't put it in there. And I'm printing this one with uh, gray ABS from Folger Tech, and I haven't had very good luck with this material so far. Um, they're PLA. I've had great luck with, but uh, not so much their ABS. So I print a wide brim, and if I start to see any peeling whatsoever, I clamp it down um, using the cutoff rulers I have. But let's go back to the V slot stuff. Um, so installing this stuff was easy. You know, once I got them all on here, I replaced, you see this is orange. Initially, when I had my, um, my x-axis motor using the uh, uh, silent stepper I had to increase the voltage a lot and it ran hot and started to work apart so I changed it uh, to an ABS one and at the time I had orange ABS in the printer so that's what I printed it. Um, I also put in a, a dampening isolator on this one because it was vibrating but then I swapped the motor out with a y-axis sized motor so it's a, a higher amperage motor. And after that, in tuning, and running them at uh, 0.5 volts, they don't get hot. Now this has been running for over an hour, and it's just warm. Um, the Y-axis motor was always that way. Um, yeah, I, since the, uh, I did the initial video, I printed up the cable chain in the back and installed that for my Y-axis. And I still need to do one for the x-axis cabling, but uh, I'm going to be swapping this whole extruder setup out 
with this one I'm building now, and I have the E3D, E3D V6 uh, coming in this week. So I need to build another plate to mount and do all that this week. Uh, I have to design it still. But uh, yeah, um, installation gotchas, there really weren't any. Uh, getting, I wish these screws and, and the design went all the way through. Because uh, threading into plastic is a pain in the neck, especially with a very fine thread M3 bolt. Um, so you have to be really careful when you're threading. Uh, otherwise, you'll strip them out. I added two for backlash. I don't know if I need it or not. But I have on the side here my um, my BL Touch uh, auto leveler. So there is up and down motion, even though my bed's fairly level and it's not moving very much right now. I'm just looking at it now to see if I can see it. it just moves a little bit. Uh, and yeah. When it's turned off every once in a while, when everything's turned off, I will use a spacer um, to level the bar to the bed, and that's how I level it out. Um, so I level the bed to the bar, um, and sooner or later I'll pick up uh, a very accurate level I can lay on the bed, and then I'll level the bed to actually be level. Um, but since I've installed the PL Touch, I really don't have to adjust the bed level at all. Um, I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the design of the belt tensioner. He has two designs. This is version two. And it talks to the side here, like pan a little bit. Go over here. It's over here. And what I don't like about it is I can't see if the belt is riding in the middle on those bearings are entirely obscured. His version one uh, is open on the side and you can kind of change the direction on that one because it clamps up right against the block here and I might put that on sooner or later. Um, and I printed this up early on and the reason it's not square is it had lifted during the print but it was still good enough that I could use it. Um, the bearings here are the same bearings that I ran before. I just took them out of the old one and put them in the new one. Um, I got the, the lead screws from Amazon and I got the extra set of, and I ordered the extra set afterward of hubs from Amazon as well. They came from China and took some time to get those. But I'm pretty happy with the setup. It's very quiet. Um, you don't hear, especially with those silent steppers, any stepper noise. And the prints I'm getting are very, very good. Uh, very happy with what I'm getting. I said with this particular filament, I'm not so happy. I'm just going to use it up. And uh, I've been using Hatchbox for like the orange, and I've had great luck with that. Um, for this stuff, I have to run it a little bit hotter. And like I said, I think. I have not been able to stop it from lifting. Oh, since the last time I also swapped out the beds, I'm running glass now, because in order to print ABS and heat to 100 Celsius, it was taking 45 minutes to heat that aluminum bed, where it takes 10 to 15 minutes to heat the glass. So, yeah, if you're, if you're running a, a mill plate with a 12 volt um, heat bed, running off of ramps, I just couldn't do it. It took too, too long. Um, you know, maybe someday I will get a 110 heat bed that runs off of an AC mains, and uh, I've looked into that, and that would probably heat up much, much better. Uh, let's see. I don't really think there's anything else I can talk about. Um, yeah, if you have questions about it, the setup of your, if you're doing the same same thing I did, uh, put some comments below and I'll, I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. And uh, you know, like I said, right now I'm doing the uh, my extruder, and once I have this printed and working, hopefully today I'll be able to verify because I have. Let me bring it up on the camera. This is a version that's missing the hole in the bottom. <laughs> um, and also, his design was for three millimeter filament. 
where this is, um, I run 175, so I resized that hole in the bottom for 175. But this is my design, or well, his design with my changes. For uh, a belted extruder, and I'm gonna make a plate that mounts on that, uh, on the gantry carriage, and uh, we'll see how that runs. The big thing I'm looking to do with the belt is I get a bit of uh, more in the print, and I'm hoping that goes away with the belt. Um, it looks really cool. But uh, yeah, there should be a ton of torque with this, uh, with this design. Um, you know, versus the direct drive, which is what it has now. Uh, the other thing I did was I swapped out the drive gear from the brass that it came with to a, to a stainless. So this is the one that you know you have if you have the stock via uh, Folger Tech extruder. I put the stainless one they offer him, and uh, I have a problem changing filament with it. Uh, I can't get it to you know, when it pushes out the old filament down below the bottom. I suppose I could just extract it all instead. But what I normally do is cut the top and extrude through the bottom and then push the new one in, and it would work until I put that stainless steel one in, and now it misses the old one once it goes down below. And it only happened after I changed the uh, changed that stainless steel. Um, but the new extruder uses a hob bolt. There isn't as much area for the uh, for the filament to not line up based on what I'm looking at. So I'm hoping it'll work. But uh, yeah, um, I, I, I'll have a video up soon um, on the main reason why I got this printer, which was to build a uh, pan tilt head for my camera. And uh, I have that basically done. I'm waiting for the control package that it runs on an Arduino Duo coming from Denmark. Um, he was out of stock for several weeks, so I just got the order in last week, so hopefully it'll be in. I have another new one, because uh, I have a, another part that uses our Arduino Duo, but I don't have a spare one, so I had to order another one of those, and that uses uh, big easy drivers, so I had to order a couple of those. And I've just been an ordering fool. Hopefully I'm done with ordering stuff. But uh, yeah, this, this is a really nice setup. It works well. Uh, it would be nice to be able to buy a printer like this. Already done, but well, I can say I did it all. Um, yeah, and I'll link to my own Thingiverse. I have some designs up in Thingiverse that I've uploaded, and I'll be uploading more designs uh, in the future. Like I said, I've I, bought, I built this machine so that I could design and build my own camera stuff, which is why this is on my camera page. Um, so there'll be stuff showing up in Thingiverse for that over the next probably couple of months. But the first one is basically done, is already uploaded. Just need to wait to uh, get the control package in and then try it out. Until next time. Thanks for watching.